Okay, so welcome to you from the top. Happy Thursday, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I am really excited today. We've got someone who has not presented before on Tips from the Top, and I know she's got a lot of creative and a lot of great ideas. Um, so I want to introduce and thank Heather Kelly uh, for being our guest speaker today. Um, I want to tell you guys a little bit about Heather, and then I will turn it over to her. So Heather is originally from Colorado, uh, but she's been in San Diego since 2009. She's kind of like me. She's not bi-coastal. She's mid-coastal because she still spends about three years in Colorado. Sorry, three months um, out of the year in Colorado. Um, and I spend my time in the Midwest and then also in California, too. So we're soul sisters in that way, Heather. Um, so Heather was in corporate America up until 2015, and essentially, like so many people, uh, went through the hurdles of getting laid off multiple times. And so getting frustrated with that, she decided to start her own consulting business, which she still does today for the right type of clients. Uh, she chooses how to spend her time very wisely. Uh, but Heather uh, basically met uh, one of our senior executive directors, Fox, at an event, and totally was not looking for one hope like so many of you guys and she fell in love with the wolf fox because she's a mommy of a beautiful dog and um, she said about two sips into the Pinot Noir she was ready to sign up. Um, so Heather has a gorgeous puppy named Millie and she does competitive shows with her um, and let's see she said um, she does agility and water trials and they earned eight titles last year so I definitely uh, want to talk to you more one-on-one -on -one about that because I love watching uh, the dog show after the Rose Parade I think it's on every year uh, but Heather earned her crush award um, in um, she had the eighth highest sales in our company just two months after she joined so she is a total powerhouse um, she hit director in November and December and this lady is on a roll um, so thank you so much, Heather, for agreeing to share some tips and ideas with us today about social media. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for having me. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about social media and how it's not just promotion. Um, it's about building community. And with some of the changes that Facebook and Instagram have made recently, um, it's even more important that we focus not on promotion. Um, so. Um, a successful social media strategy has promotion about five to 10% of the time. So meaning that out of every 10 posts, maybe one should be promotion. Um, so what do you post the other time? The, the first one is personality. Show who you are. These can be engagement posts, funny videos, your kids, your dog, your everyday life, inspirational quotes, whatever it is that resonates with you um, so that people get to know you because people do business with people they know, like, and trust. So through personality posts, you're able to get people to know you and like you. Um, the second one that is that leads people to trust you is to produce purposeful quotes or purposeful posts. And by a purposeful post, what I mean is it might be a recipe that you're sharing from the One Hope blog that has in it what they can pair with what wine they compare with, but it doesn't tell them how to buy it. It's just giving them the recipe and saying, here's something else that you might find interesting. Um, it isn't, that is definitely not the time to throw your, in your buy it here, how to buy it, anything like that. Um, the community that you've developed will determine what types of purposeful posts to use. So if my community was heavily involved in nonprofits, I would, post something about a local nonprofit, possibly one that I was working with, and show off their events, and then show off their cause. And finally, I would throw out, hey, you could host a wine tasting. So using the Gary Vanderchuk um, terminology, it's a jab, 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 right hook. So you throw out there a little thing about the, bit, about the nonprofit, a little thing about their events, a little jab about their causes, and then the right hook would be asking for uh, you to, for somebody to host a tasting for them. So if that makes sense. So that's kind of in that purposeful vein and then getting that promotion piece at the very end in. Um, sorry, I have notes that I wrote down so that I wouldn't forget anything because there's so much to say. Um, 
so this part, this is the important piece. This applies to your personal profile. It implies to your business page, your Facebook group, your Instagram, anywhere else that you are on social media. Um, and with the recent changes Facebook has made, it's even more important to follow this. So if you use clickbait, meaning you are asking in the post for somebody to like it, share it, or comment on it, your post will be suppressed from the newsfeed. And you do it too much and you will risk Facebook jail or losing your account. So going forward, Facebook is changing their algorithm, which what they do regularly. And we need to understand what the algorithm is, but, and we need to work with it because we will never beat it. That's just a fact. You will never outsmart Facebook. Um, and I follow a direct sales coach and I work directly with a social media girl as well here in San Diego. Um, and here's what both of them have said based on their experiences and talking directly to Facebook. Keep your Facebook profile free of all promotion. If you want, have a Facebook page where you can put your promotional material and then share that to your personal profile. And then finally, have a group and build a community. Now, we're not talking like a LuLaRoe group where you're selling your products inside, you know, inside there, but building a community around wine where people want to see. And here's the reason why. And this is directly from some Facebook gurus, including people that work at Facebook. The number one thing the algorithm is favoring is affinity. So meaning a natural liking for or attraction to a person, idea, thing, et cetera. And a group is how they are seeing what you have an affinity with. So for example, I'm in two Portuguese water dog groups because um, clearly my dog is pretty much a third of my life. Um, and so I see a lot of their posts. Well, when I comment on them, then anybody that I'm friends with that are also in those group, I'm seeing more of their personal posts. So if you're commenting on a group, then you're getting more of that person in your profile or in your newsfeed. So basically the bottom line is build a group, grow your group and do it organically. So meaning don't add 500 people to your group because you think that that's a great idea. Um, and don't use the invite feature, actually copy the link for the group you've created and send it to people in their messages uh, in you know private messages and ask them if they would like to come over and join themselves um, because you want people you don't just want the bodies there you want the interaction and so having 5,000 people and only having 10 participate means you'll never make it into the news feed you're better off having 50 people and 10 people participate because then you're going to make it into those 50 people's news feeds and potentially into their friends news feeds as well so you want to aim for a minimum of a 4% engagement on each post that you post, regardless of where it is. So 4% doesn't sound like a lot, but if you've got 400 people, getting 4% to engage is quite a bit. Um, and you want at least 20% of your community engaging. So if you have 100 people, 100 people in your group, you want 20 people to engage. And of that 20, you want 20 people to be engaging and of those 20 people, 4% of them will be doing at any given point in time. Um, hopefully that helps a little bit on what Facebook's doing. Um, on the Instagram side of it, Instagram has made some changes recently too. Um, the biggest thing is, is look for um, five, about five hashtags that have over 7 million views on them because those are gonna move really fast. Um, somewhere between five and 10 in the 250,000 to 7 million range because you actually have a shot of getting seen and get some additional followers there. And then anything under 250,000 is considered a custom hashtag. And so those are gonna be slower moving um, and they're likely going to be, you know, people that are, you know, if we use the hashtag, hashtag via one hope, it's mostly going to be us that are going to be on there. Right. Um, but, but the hashtag wine is going to have, you know, 50 billion posts. Um, so you want to find stuff that's in the middle that you can hopefully bring other people to. 
if you promote on your Instagram at all, Instagram issued a statement the other day that um, they will be shutting down um, personal posts, personal profiles, just like Facebook that are using them for business purposes. Um, so you need to convert to a business account. Um, the great thing about Instagram business account is as long as you have a hundred followers, you have an instant, you can see what your engagement is, what your reach is, what the impressions are that each post is seeing. Um, so that's, so you get that analytics right there. So you can tell if what you're doing is working or not. So that's kind of the two big platforms. Um, and then the third platform I was just going to briefly touch on was Pinterest. Um, Pinterest is the largest um, search engine besides Google um, in every age range, including men now. Um, they're starting to, they're like, the, it's number two for men, number one for women. Um, and so if you can get your pins out there and redirect them to you, so to your replicated website, to your blog, to your Facebook profile, whatever, wherever you want your people to end up, then that is a great opportunity for you um, because not a lot of people are using that. So that's, that's a platform that, and again, you can build some um, no like and trust out there as well because you've got the whole, um, you can be pinning things that aren't just directly related to, to one help. So, and if you guys have any questions or anything, you can feel free to reach out to me at any time. Um, and if you would like to know the direct sales coach that I follow, she was the top of her direct sales um, company for two years in a row. And within the first six months, she was the largest recruiter. Um, so she's, and she has built a community of over a hundred thousand people on Facebook. Um, and she has some great training and great tips out there. So I'm happy to share that with anybody. Um, and she has a great monthly group too, that you can get some amazing, amazing insights into the minds of how people are working in direct sales, as well as how to use, you know, how to use the social media platforms. Heather, um, I don't know if you feel comfortable sharing it on the call, but someone. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm totally fine sharing it. I just wasn't sure if everybody would want to hear it, but the woman's name is Brenda Stir. Um, her big group is the Socialite Suite. Um, and you can go to sassysuite.com. And she has trainings on Instagram, on Pinterest, um, on hosting Facebook parties. Um, so everything I've said is like a four second snip of what she's taught me. Yes. Yes, Kaz. S-T-E-R. <laughs> So Heather, I have a question for you. So you were talking about um, hashtags on Instagram. And so is it similar in that, um, like when you Google something, the things that get clicked on the most rise to the top, right? So yes. obviously if you do hashtag wine, a lot more people use that versus hashtag one hope. Should we right. still keep using hashtag one hope as much as possible so that starts to rise to the top? Yes, yes. So. You, so the hashtag, right? So using the hashtag one hope that gets you to a group of people that already know about one hope, right? So they already know about it. They may be following that hashtag because that's something now you can do is actually follow the hashtag that you've put out there. Um, so, and then that way you can see what other people are posting or whatever. Now that's great for all of us and for people that know about one hope. But if we want people to know about One Hope, then that's when you need to use other hashtags, right? Because that's how you're going to get, you know, if you hashtag San Luis Obispo Pinot Noir, probably only has maybe 300 posts on it. So your picture, your image may be seen, and then somebody may click on it, start following you, and follow your leads down to, you know, whichever, wherever you're funneling them to. Good to know. Okay. Um, I have one other question too, as far as having an Instagram business page, um, can you have a personal Instagram yes. account as well as a business? And is there a cost associated with the Instagram business account? Nope, there is not. And the one thing with, um, Instagram that I didn't mention is that you, you know, everybody has one link in it. 
Um, there's a really cool service that's completely free. It's called Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E. -E. And what it does is it gives you the ability to have one link in your profile in Instagram and have like 40 buttons or five buttons or whatever it is, wherever you want them to go. So if you want them to learn more about hosting and you have a, you know, um, you can direct them to the hosting page. If you want them to learn to shop, you can direct them to shopping, um, whatever it is. So, and um, my business is more than a bottle. Um, that's what I am on every social media channel. Um, so you can look it up and see my link tree on Instagram and how it works. Um, it's pretty cool and pretty powerful. And in the free version, you get um, insights into what people are clicking and what they're doing. So that's kind of cool too. Love that. Awesome tips, Heather. Um, and I love what you talked about too. You know, people do business with others that they know, that they like, and that they trust. And, um, you know, how do you get to know, like, and trust somebody? You get involved with them on more of a friend level and a personal level, not a business level. Um, and so it's interesting. It plays in really well to a lot of conversations I've been having this week about um, if you think about picking up the phone, let's say, to ask somebody to host a wine tasting or maybe it's somebody that you want to recruit, um, you kind of like get in that zone and in that mode. Um, and it's a different you take on a different tone, a different posture, everything. When you know you're going to pick up the phone to make a recruiting call yep. versus you're going to get on the phone to call a friend. Um, and so I think if we can kind of switch our mindsets and our approach to, hey, I'm calling a friend and I generally do want to ask her about her dog and how the competition was last week and connect on other things before the conversation ultimately um, leads to one hope, but I'm not going to lead with that. I'm going to lead with truly being somebody's friend and connecting with them because then it feels authentic. Then it doesn't feel icky and weird and salesy and pushy. And you're in a totally different mind space and have a totally different attitude. And I think your outcomes of those conversations are going to be much more favorable when you approach people on that friendship, know, like, and trust level. So I love that you shared that. Absolutely. And it makes things less awkward. If you lead with value, people are drawn to you. Love it. And I love, so you're on Instagram is more than a bottle, more than a bottle. That's great. <laughs> Cause we're more than a bottle of wine. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions? Sorry. I've monopolized the questions here. Um, you got my brain working. Anybody else have any other questions for Heather? Okay, we'll get ready for your Instagram feed to have a lot more followers after this call. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I'm happy to help anybody. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a message, you know, feel free to uh, private message me on Facebook. Um, you can message me on Instagram, wherever you are. You can pretty much find me. I, I'm, I'm not real hidden on social media. Awesome. Thank you so much, Heather. I loved um, all of your tips and hopefully everybody enjoyed the time spent today. Definitely share this call with your teams. We'll post the recording on our CEO community page like we always do. Um, and just a reminder, we won't be having calls next week because home office is out of the office um, traveling for our annual um, home office corporate meeting. So you guys have a great week. Um, good to see you all and we will catch up with you in two weeks. Bye everybody. Bye-bye.